If you're looking for a budget-friendly telephoto lens for your Micro Four Thirds or APC cam, today I will be showing you a lens that might work for you. Hello everyone, my name is Wayne, and in this episode we are going to be taking a look at the Canon FD 35-105, an affordable vintage telephoto lens. I don't usually use telephoto lenses in my projects. I shoot mostly YouTube and travel stuff nowadays. And more often than not, my Lumix 12 to 35 on my GH5 does the job. However, recently we were on a trip and I wanted to capture some landscape shots that would have been really dope closer. That's when I realized it's time to invest in a telephoto lens. Initially, I was gonna get the Lumix 35 to 100 because of its size, weight, and IS. But at around 900 bucks, it was quite expensive. And it's also gonna be limited to Micro Four Third cameras. So I won't be able to use it if I go full frame. I remember coming across the Canon FD35-105 to before because I'm a fan of vintage lenses. So I figured now is a good time to see if this lens would work for me. I'm not gonna go in depth about the history and the specs of this lens. What I am gonna cover are the features that I loved and also the things that I dislike when testing this lens. As far as positives, first of all, what I love about this lens is the price. You can get this lens for about 100 bucks, plus the cost of a lens adapter, which I recommend getting a focal reducer. I'll explain why this is important later in the video. I shoot with a GH5, and with the crop and the focal reducer, I'm able to get a pretty good telephoto range of about 50 to 150 mil. And if you get an FD2X teleconverter, which I already own since I have other FD lenses, you can get about a 300mm telephoto lens with this combo. I'll link all of this below if you guys want to check it out. I love the colors and the image quality that come out of this lens. It's not overly saturated, and for lack of a better word, to me it looks filmic. It's also not super sharp compared to modern lenses, which I also like. I usually soften my images a bit anyways, because the GH5 produces a very sharp image. The focus and zoom rings are really nice and smooth to operate. I find rack focusing using this lens easy to execute. It has a macro functionality at 35 that you can activate by sliding the switch. This is really not a true macro though, it just allows you to get closer to your subject, similar to a diopter. This being a manual lens, I also like that it has a constant aperture and that it can go wide open at 3.5. Some of the cheap telephoto lenses I've found have variable aperture, which I'm really not a fan of. As far as the negatives, which are mostly to be expected because this is a vintage lens, the first one is this lens flares quite a bit. And if you add an adapter, which adds another lens element, it can get really bad. That's the reason why you have to use a quality lens adapter. I used a cheap one initially, and all my shots had a round flare in the middle, making this lens almost unusable. I recommend getting the Roxin FD Focal Reducer or something similar. This reduces flare significantly. However, you are still gonna get a circular magenta flare if you point your lens in a direct light source. Another negative is this lens has a 1.5 meter minimum focus distance which makes this lens difficult to use in small spaces. Lastly, this lens is quite heavy, but for the price and the shots I'm able to get with it, I really can't complain. To end this video, let me just show you guys some test shots I got. I hope this video was useful to you guys, and if you all dug the content, I would appreciate if you guys like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you on a bit. Later.